Well, good afternoon, YouTubers. Welcome into Flying with Mike. Now, this is going to be made strictly for YouTube. It's a flight that I flew a couple days ago, live stream. We had some mistakes in it, but that's not the main reason we're reflying it. It's because we forgot to start the Acre program to get the flight underway. So, let's hop up into the cockpit, get this uh, flight a rolling. And uh, we're going to be going from Wellington, New Zealand, up to Auckland. It's raining here in Wellington, but uh, they're not reporting any sky conditions up in uh, Auckland. So we'll see what we get. <clears throat> so first thing we got to do is get up into the cockpit here. Um, hang on a second. I reorganize things, and as you can tell, they're not working out like they should. Here we go. There we are. And well, it's there it goes. Okay, so we're on the live map here with uh, Sim Toolkit. Wellington's right here, and this little blue guy that's our aircraft parked in uh, uh, gate 16, I believe it was, when I set it up. But uh, today's departure should be 1 6. And uh, we'll uh, go through that right now in the pre-flight brief. Okay, pre-flight brief-wise, uh, like I said, here's our flight route here on Sim Toolkit. Uh, no, uh, Wellington, runway 16. Then we're heading to Caden2Q.Russell to Davy to the Dave C. Charlie arrival into uh, Auckland, and that's, of course, wrong. We're probably now coming in on 2-3 left, um, and we're uh, <clears throat> looking at the winds, and we'll go over that here real quick. Fly time for this, uh, we're looking at a distance of 288 miles. Um, <clears throat> With uh, fuel being uploaded, uh, 15,483 pounds. All right, so the weather here in Auckland, I'm sorry, Wellington, getting myself all turned around, um, currently 150 at 18, unlimited visibility overcast at 5,000. Now we're showing rain on the uh, windscreen. Uh, let's see if that's still there. Hang on. Yeah, we're showing it misting or raining or something. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll go with what they give us. Uh, 14 degrees Celsius outside and 8 degrees Celsius for the uh, dew point and Q&H 1028. Nothing supposedly significant going on. Real quick look at our destination weather. Here's Auckland uh, as of 2130, about 30-ish minutes old. 160 at 11, which does favor 23 left. Um, unlimited visibility, no sky condition, 20 degrees Celsius and uh, 11 degrees Celsius. You know, we'd even take that here in Fahrenheit in St. Louis. It's a, a tropical, balmy 10 degrees Fahrenheit. 
I don't know what that translates out in the minus world of uh, Celsius. But we would love to see just even 20. But anyway, I digress. Okay, so moving on, um, Wellington's uh, airport information you can see here. We're 41 feet above sea level. Uh, for runway, or uh, so runway 16, we're on a 5,955 foot runway. Transition level is 13,000, heading for the runway 160, and there is a slight slope. We are in X plane, and that is modeled at least on the default level. So, so moving on, let's take a look at our winds and significant chart wise. Uh, first off, here's our routing, still showing. Five David, which we were going to fly until I decided, you know, it's one of those where you're right on the roller coaster, you know, right there. Do I go five? Do I go one six? It's technically a hundred degree crosswind, so we'll take the uh, two three. Um, significant weather wise, we have turbulence uh, from 30 to 43,000. It looks like light turbulence up here. Uh, south of Wellington, 26 to 38,000 with the light chop. Nothing in between showing significance. Okay, we'll move over to the next one. Uh, that's that's going to probably be the right wind chart for us at cruise. And by the way, cruise on this flight, folks, being under 300 miles, it doesn't last long. It's just we get that sign off as quickly as we can. That way the flight attendants might make two passes, more than likely only one, in helping out or serving the uh, guests. And then the we're starting back down and the sign has to come back on. So and you'll see that today. So anyway, we're looking at pretty much direct crosswinds all the way along the route. So with that, let's hop into the plane and start accepting the cockpit and moving from there. And one second, folks. All right. So I'm pulling up the uh, checklist right now for the preliminary in this plane. Uh, what we're going to be doing is making sure the battery switch is on. That's this switch here. The standby power is on and guarded. That's this switch. Um, the ground power is on. And we made sure it is connected to the bus. Uh, the AC-DC voltmeter, that's this here. This controls mostly what we see up here. We're on ground power. Uh, moving on, we have cabin and utility power, both of those, and the IFE passenger seat power have to be on. Cabin utility is here. IFE passenger here, both set to on. Um, emergency exit lights are on and guarded. Uh, collision lights are off. Um, I don't like how these move around like they do. Window heat is all four on. Anti or probe heat is off at the moment. Anti ice is off and electric pumps are off for the hydraulics. Fuel pumps, we'll switch those all off. We do not have the APU running. As you can see, it's at zero on the temperature. And all right, so let's work now the air conditioning. So the trim air switch is on. All our cabin uh, uh, air is set to auto. Recirks are set to auto. And packs are set to auto with the isolation at idle too, at auto. All right, finally, uh, wrapping this up here, the cruise and landing altitudes are set. We're going to try for 29,000. I know the flight plan said we should be able to get the 35. I'm going to play it on the safe side. And we'll be 50 feet MSL with uh, Auckland. All right, folks, that 
wraps up our um, preliminary checks, making sure everything. The only other things I want to make sure landing gear levers down, flaps are zero, and zero speed brakes are down, and transponder is currently in standby and our frequencies are set. Okay, real quick, we'll do a fire check here. I don't know if you hear that, but you can see they're lit up and on. One. Oh, I forgot to do one with it there. And then the silent one. And that's these two in the middle, and then the cargo. Okay, so that concludes our preliminary check. All right, so what we need to do now is move on to the, uh, uh, what we're going to do is set up our navigation. Uh, basically, this is going to be a quick setup of the route. So we're going to go all the way to the top. Um, and what I'm going to do first is move this enter knob, which is the display select, to heading status all the way to the right. Then I'm going to two-click the uh, IRS um, switches so that they end up on nav. Do a quick check of the devices. Three green on the gear. I'm going to come back down. All right. And we've been getting that a lot. Not sure why. We've got an updated nav data. Okay, so moving here. Uh, what we did is we clicked this uh, line select by FMC, which brought this page up. Check the data, make sure it's up to date. Move to here. We'll put in the arrival airport. November, Sulu, Whiskey, November. All right, now what I'll do is go to the next page. And being today is the 16th of February, hope you all had a good Valentine's Day over uh, Sunday. <clears throat> but what we're going to do is we're going to use the right one. What I kind of do is left, right, uh, odd, even. So the left is the odd. So I'm on an odd day, I'll use the left GPS. On the right day, I'll use, on an even day, I'll use the right one. I do the same thing with my ignition igniters. Left and right, when you have to select them, I do the same thing there and a couple of other things we'll point out as we go through here. So we click the line select next to it, previous page, enter it in, and we're ready to go. Now, <clears throat> I forgot to mention something. Up here, where I moved this over to status, you notice it's just a single number. That's your um, alignment time. So at this moment, we're at five minutes. And I... I'm trying to check to see if the real 737s have this feature. But when you move them, you never, on even PMDG this works, you never knew how much time you had. Well, you go up here and do this little trick and you see that. All right, so back down. So here's our arrival. Let's put that in origin. And our destination. Boom. Boom. All right, flight number for today. We're going to go ahead with the flight number I used to help set this flight plan up. Uh, we're flying with Mac Air, so hang on a second. There we go. And this page is all set up. Now, the next page is where we actually put in the, uh, the route itself. And in this case, it's only two fixes. Uh, Russell, which is R. U S, whoops, there we go. Uh, where is it at? I L and Davy. And that is D A V E E. And there you go, folks. There's your route. You can click activate execute. Now what I'll do is go over to the first officer, click FMC, position, route, hit program, or progress, sorry. Now, looking through here, uh, 
Interesting. Oh, we don't have any performance data, that's why. Okay, uh, there's Russell Davy. What we're looking at is this number here, 259. And if we remember from uh, um, that our route is 288, well, the uh, straight line is 259. So as long as we're between those numbers, uh, we're good. And we, we don't really have to look through it, especially when you get those super long flights like Hong Kong to uh, uh, Frankfurt or um, where they have massive amounts of airways and fixes that you're doing. Uh, it's a little trick to help you out there. And we got three minutes up there. I kind of like looking up there every from time to time. Okay, so we know this is good. So if we click next page, we're back to the route page. Let's throw the runway in. Oh, I went one, two, oh, I hit climb. My bad. Uh, let's see. So we look for NZWN. That's our departure point. We click departure. And we are going on the KDN, KADN to Quebec. To Russell. Runway 16. And as you can see now, everything shows in a select mode, meaning that's what we've selected. To activate, we just simply click Execute, and they move to Activate. Back to Route. And then what I'll do is go through this leg-wise. Okay. I'm also going to put the arrival in, being 300 miles, call it 300 mile fly time, Let's be right on our game and be set to go. So for that, we go to the line select. Oh, let me uh, do that again. For the arrival, we find ours, November Zulu Alpha Alpha. Click Arrive. Um, and then we start looking for our, our, our uh, arrival. Again, where'd it go? I lost my route here. Oh, there it is. Davy. Oh, I went too far. Seven Charlie. It is. All right. Now, a lot of these FMCs will pull up only the runways that match that star. Now, granted, a lot of these stars are for both runways. But when they are delineated, like many countries have them set up, those will be the runways available. We want the ILS 23 left. And, of course, I don't think they're making this easy for me. In case we have... Um, let me check my chart in the cockpit here. 165M. All right, so we do have that. So again, you can see they're all in select. We click execute. They become active. And as you guessed, I'm going to check the legs again one more time, making sure we have no discontinuities, no empty boxes, and looking good. All right, so back to route. And as you can see, our IRS aligned. There's our routing. Let me uh, pull out a little here. You can kind of get a feel for how the star is. We'll go into that here shortly in the departure brief. Okay, moving on. Let's now do the perf uh, performance initialization. First thing I want to do, though, is make sure we're done fueling. NX plane with the Zebo you have this tablet. You can set your payload up here, put your fuel number in here, go back, click the fuel truck, the green pump will turn red. If you look outside on the first officer side, you'll see the um, fuel truck hooked up to the plane. When it's done fueling, it just goes away. So it looks like we're green. Oh, wait a minute, let me go back. Uh, I went to the wrong one. Uh, we are loaded. Also, when you put the number in, when you click here and you put a number in, it'll be down here. When it's finished, it'll be here. And that's our 14,483. Okay, let me get things set up better here. Okay, and move that out of the way. I just want to check. 14, 483. All right. 
All right, so we're loaded there. Let's continue on. So we'll put a uh, 14.8. Oh, yeah. It's not 14, isn't it? It's 15. Hang on. We can do this check real quick. 1543. I'm looking at those numbers going, how did it get that number? All right. Uh, 15.4. Zero fuel weight. All you got to do is click the line select uh, reserves. For this trip, reserve-wise, we're going to go with 8.4. That's alternate and our reserve for the 45 minutes. So that gives us both numbers. Okay. And I'm just going to do it as 8. Oop, uh, not a cost index of 8. I'll change that. And cost index will be 8.5. That's what I use on pretty much all of 737s I fly. <clears throat> now, see what I mean? This is saying we could go to 38,200 feet. Ain't that, no way. Not with 319 miles total. That's star to SID, or SID to star, and route to the place. So we're going to 29,000 now I'm getting really comfortable with. Okay, so punch that in there. Okay, and we do have an average cruise wind on Sim Brief that comes over to Sim Toolkit. That is 251 at 24. 251 at 24. All right, these ISA and T slash C O A T, I have no idea. So I don't know how to fill them in, so I don't. All right, so we've activated the performance initialization. Now we'll go to N1. Now here I use what's called a top cat for the program. I can't bring that onto the program here. Um, well, heck, what did I do wrong? Okay, well, we'll do it an old-fashioned way. Hang on a second. Let me get those V numbers. The uh, first flight that I did, they were all 140s. Uh, but I want to make sure we down get the D rate right. Take off landing report. All right, so we're departing runway 16. Landing runway, runway 23. Try. We'll go with dry. Okay, we'll go to A cars, take off data. Okay, so for what we're looking at, we get what the pilots get in a. Uh, <clears throat> oh, wait. Okay, so. Okay, so we got a little difference here. What is our... So we're going to go flaps 15. Oh, we did 25 last time. Wow. All right, so flaps 15, T01. So we'll set it for T01. And then for the uh, select speed, uh, 34. Climb 2, I think, will be okay. And basically all you're doing is just pulling the power back on the climb outs to help wear and tear on the engines. And I'm going to set my lights here real quick while they're right there staring at me. So now we come to the page here. This is where we will see our V speeds momentarily. We're going to go to the next page. <clears throat> next page... Uh, Well, crud. Um, just got to get something to write on real quick. It's what I get for not being fully prepared in my cockpit. All right. One, three, six. One, three, six, one, four, one. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Close. And I'm just getting the wins right now. Uh, that's what I thought. 150 at 18. Okay, I don't know how to put the runway slope in here. I've tried a couple of times. It never seems to work for me. So I just put the runway heading of 160. Oops, I did it wrong. Put a slash in there first. Okay, acceleration height, 1,500 feet is what I like to do with all aircraft. Um, climb through, climb two is our thrust, and what will happen is when we, uh, there should have a um, cutout where it'll go, you know, um, I can't think of the actual name of it. But anyway, you reach a certain altitude, it'll transition into climb. So... <clears throat> All right, so let's go back to here. Let's click the one for CG. There's our CG. Now they're calling, oh crud, I got rid of that. I think it was flaps 15, flaps 15. Okay, so what we'll do is one, five. Let's see how we did. 132, 134, and they're not bad. We're gonna go with those. And then our trim, 3.75. All right, so there you go, folks. We've got the uh, FMC set up. Uh, one thing I do want to get rolling is POSCON. Let me get logged in real quick. Okay, and while I'm at this point, let's get a flight plan in there, POSCON. And get rid of this. And I'm sure it's taking this up way too high. And okay. And we'll submit. Oh. Hang on. And our flight plan is now delivered to POSCON. All we have to do is activate it. Now to this part, folks, you come down to Web UI. When it loads, click ATC, log in, and NZZC is the service here, NZ. And we're going under Mac. And send. Oh, good, it's not too loud in my ears. And then what we're waiting for is it to reply back, telling us that it's, you know, up and running. And, whoop. We have a squawk code. It's 0173. Now, I know you couldn't see any of that. Um, I'm working on trying to get things set up here. Let's do, whoop. Okay, so we got our squawk in there. We're up on POSCON, and what you do then is just go back to the... Uh, Web UI, which I already have up, dummy, 
and this icon is the map and of course there I am in Wellington we'll center that and you of course can't see any of this sorry if you are on POSCOM by the way feel free to fly with us anytime we're uh, live uh, we are on uh, uh, Twitch and uh, do do a lot of uh, flights on Twitch so uh, today was a very tiring day yesterday at work We had a lot of snow here in St. Louis. Uh, I'd say we got easily six to eight inches uh, drifts to six to eight hundred feet. No, just kidding. Seems like that out there, though. But anyway, it's cold. It's everything. Plus flights at the airport. Uh, work in the firehouse out at the airport. So just a uh, miserable long day. 24-hour shift, and we start at 7.30 in the morning and didn't hit the racks until 11 o'clock at night. So, yes, very tired. But, you know, that's what it is, and then comes summertime, and then we won't be complaining about this. So, let's get back into where we were. So, we've got the aircraft pre-flighted. we got the aircraft. We've accepted the cockpit. We've got the nav data in the FMC and the IRS obviously aligned uh, we got a few more items we'll go through the checklist and then we'll get our MCP here set so uh, let's go ahead and kick that APU on so I'm going to go to the top panel here we're going to turn on the fuel pump for the left aft fuel pump okay when that light goes out We'll then move over to the APU switch. We'll switch it to on and then start holding it three seconds or more, a little more than that, and then we'll let it go. And then in about three to five seconds, we should start seeing the needle move here for the temperature. He says that cautiously. There it goes. Okay, a little more than three to five seconds. But anyway, here she goes firing up. And then once it fires up and stabilizes, it'll go all the way up to somewhere near 8. And then it'll back down to somewhere between 6 and 4. Once it gets to that point, you'll see the blue light light here for the generators. Now, while we're waiting, this Zebo 737, folks, is almost, and if not possibly slightly better, than the PMDG 737 that Microsoft uh, flight sim users uh, use immensely. Um, it's coming out soon for the new one. I haven't gotten any dates, anything, but uh, there are some things that Microsoft Flight Sim has to uh, uh, be able to be adjusted for. So these very complex uh, panels and aircraft can operate properly in them. So when that happens, that's when I'll be probably switching into Microsoft and going back to it. I'm more of a Microsoft FSX guy, but I've been learning X-Plane and flying it for the last six months or so, as well as streaming and videoing. So if you like what you're seeing, hit that subscribe button, folks, and notification, and that'll give you an email when I've put a video out here on YouTube. All right, so what I did, the blue light was on for the generator, so all I did is went to the APU Gen 1 and 2, clicked the down arrow. This is an X-plane thing. Clicked them down to get that turned on, and then we're going to come over here and turn it on to the bleeds. Here comes the air into the ducts. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start loading passengers. Okay. And switch the uh, DC unit up here to APU Gen. This is the information coming off the gen now for the APU. All right, moving on to the uh, actual uh, pre-flight uh, uh, procedures. We're going to first turn the flight directors on. Then we're going to keep the auto throttle off. We're going to set the IAS. And what I'm going to do is open our view up just a little. The IAS, they want it V2 plus 15. That's a lot. 
I go V2 plus 10, and I know a lot of streamers out there and a lot of other guys, V2 plus 5. It's really up to you, the pilot. I try the easy ones because, you know, when you look at 141, V2 plus 5, okay, well, that's an easy number, but, you know, it's also easier to just go 151. Okay, we'll set the uh, heading. Uh, the heading switch will go to runway heading. Whoops. And our altitude to 29,000. Overshot. Okay. So we're set on these layers. Okay, next up, we're going to, uh, again, make sure the landing gear lever is down. Uh, and we'll come back to that, but we're going to move over to the EFAS system. And to do that, we're going to kind of zoom in and kind of lower here. Because what we're going to do first is set our altimeter. Altimeter setting for this flight is 1028. Okay, so we'll go up one, whoop. One notch. Now, the back knob works the inches of uh, mercury and uh, HEPA. Front one is the one that actually moves the numbers. Same thing over here. The back one switches it from radio altimeter to barrow, meaning your MSL setting. The front one actually moves the numbers. So let's see which one comes up. Okay. I set the radio altimeter always to 100 feet. Okay, then we switch the one in the back over to Barrow. You'll see that at the bottom. Now for this one, we are going to go up to 400. And that's it. The nice thing here about Zebo, when I click over to here, Everything's moved over, 1028. I don't have to do anything on this side other than that. Now, let's come back over. I'm also going to go ahead and make sure we're on VOR. VOR, that's my preference. Um, and turn off the traffic. Turn off the traffic. And VOR, VOR. While we're here, let's go ahead do the one and two check. Same thing over here. Whoops. And reset. Okay. All right. Okay, so like we said, landing gears down. Let's just kind of do it this way. Throttles close. Speed brakes are looking like they're up. Well, they're not. Green lights off. Flaps are zero and zero. Uh, engine starts. That uh, Levers. That is these guys. They're all the way down. That's cut off. Parking brake. Set red light on. All right, so back up top. We're going to leave the yaw dampers in off until we start an engine. Passengers can now start barting. Hallelujah. So while we'll make some things happen here, first thing is we'll get the service crews at work for a couple seconds. And then we'll switch to where we... All right, they've got the plane ready there. Let's get the passengers on board. And in the meantime, I'm going to knock out some checklists real quick, so bear with me here. Take a break. It'll be about two minutes. Okay. All 
All right. Uh, three of four. Now the big ones coming up is the flight. I just like getting these knocked out. Sorry, folks. Wish there was a way to say all done. <laughs> now I've heard of something called smart cockpit. Um, I think that's what I've heard. And it will help in some of these things, but I don't know if I'm hearing anything right or wrong on it, if it's even available for the 737, uh, but something I've been thinking about. Okay, so we're caught up here. We'll give it about another 30 seconds here, uh, and then we'll get into continuing with the B4 start, making sure we've done everything. Namely, I want to come down to here while we're on the air with you guys. Oxygen check, good. All right, so we're going to continue on with the before start, making sure we haven't missed anything. We'll keep the door open now. And I hope I have it, Mr. Tell Me. All right, so we're set up there. All right, so for the before start checklist, we pretty much just went through it. Uh, we need to turn the transponder and we'll get the pushback going here momentarily. Let's test the transponder. He says cautiously. I hate when it won't check. Okay. All right, so back up to here. And we are ready to go. All right, so let's get the pushback guy on his way. Uh, you know what, we'll just do it right here. What the heck? More than likely, they would never do this in the real world, or at least I would hope. So I am going to... Oh, wait, we're going 1-6. Okay. Click on it. Then enter. Down to cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Wow, that's always loud. Ground to cockpit, okay, toe is driving up. This is a one of those, if you are new to X-Plane or looking for stuff for X-Plane, this is one of those uh, plugins you want to have uh, better pushback. Um, it's free. And it's, I, I've never used the default uh, pushback system here. This is really good that you can set it up like this. Downside, if you were paying attention, she just drove through the building. Oh, well, can't have everything. All right, so we're going to go ahead and button up the plane. Uh, doors. Chocks are out. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Okay, and she's in her part of connect, and we're going to go ahead back to our checklist. Okay, so uh, checklist, pushback, uh, parking brake will be by her, and we need to, for the pushback, turn off a parking brake, or a uh, service B needs to be turned on. Fuel pumps on. Any collision light on. Position lights are already on. Steady. They're down at the bottom. Steady and strobe is all the way to the top. And auto throttles. They say to arm. I don't. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. I arm that when we get closer to the runway. Parking brake off. Starting pushback. 
and you may start engine. Okay. Real quick, let's let you see the plane one more time as they push it back. And then we're going to get into the startup procedure. It's slightly, I think, different than PMDG. It may not be. You all can be the judge of that. So let's get in here and let's do the startup. And to do that, we'll click over to here. Engine start. We're going to turn the pack switches off. We'll announce the sequence. We're going to go, just so you all know, we're going to start the right side first. And that right side is determined. Pilot looking out the plane. That's number two engine, by the way. Number one will go next, and we're going to be using the right side for engine start. So let's get up top here. So make sure your fuel pumps are on, APU bleed is on, packs have to be turned off. You'll see your needles come up a little bit to around 35 to 40 once they're there. All you have to do, and I'm going to switch to a little different view, is these are the starter switches. One click to the right starts them up. There you see the starts open. N2 is rising at 17 to 25 percent. You need to click it to the fuel lever, and there's 17. It'll cycle just a little longer, but then you're going to see the EGT start up and the fuel flow start moving. And there they go. Now, at 52%, um, you're going to see the starter cut out. You'll see the, the valve is already, or here it comes right now. Starter cutout. Okay. And then we let it stabilize and we start up the other engine the same way. Something tells me they might have put us in the grass, folks. Nope, oh, nope. I lied. It sure looked like it when I was looking at that tablet. Okay, and as you can see... It puts, Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. And you can see it put us right where we needed to be. Parking brake is on. Disconnecting tail. Stand by. And then what we're going to do now is start up number two, or number one, sorry. So, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the generator on for uh, number two engine. Okay, and we're just waiting. There it goes through nine, ten. Oil pressure will show up too. We're not going to have her disconnect and hand signals until we're fired up. Okay, let me move this over. And we're watching for number one to move straight up and down. Anytime now. There it goes. Starter cut out on number one. And all of our signals are out. Okay. Good engine starts. All right. So continuing on now. Uh, let's head up to the top panel. Gen 1 is on. Electric A is on. Cell is disconnected and bypass bin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Okay, and thank you for flying with Mike. Uh, left and right packs can now go to auto. Isolation valve, which was in auto, stays in auto. Bleed can turn off for the APU. And we can now shut the APU down. Okay, so we've got any collision, that's set, all right. Okay, so <clears throat> let's move over to our other checklist. Uh, we've done those, all right, all of those, yep, okay. Before taxi, so we got generator one, 
Pro Peats, we didn't get any ice. Okay, let's get back up there and get those. Pro Peat. We're going to run with just the engine ice. Okay. And pack switches, isolation, APU, engine. That's what I thought. That was what I was looking for. Okay, now uh, up to until transition level, again, 13,000. We'll double check that. We're going to have our start levers in continuous. Wrong way. Okay, so there they are. And our levers are in idle. Ground equipment's clear. We need to set our flaps, check our flight controls, and blank out the bottom one. We won't be doing that last one. Um, all right, so let's go here. Let's do this. There we go. That way we get a better view for the moment. What we're going to do here for the flight control check, and then we're going to run the checklists on the control wheels. Most pilots and most airliners cannot see the surfaces on their wingtips. They probably won't even see the wingtips to be able to see it. So we're going to do a left, and you can see them moving right there in the middle of the screen. Okay. Then we're going to do the elevator. Okay, that's free. Rudder, left and right. Another thing you can be checking here at the same time, hydraulics, pressures, and systems. Nothing's RF, everything's good pressure-wise, and A and B. Wheel brakes as well. Then all you got to do is click engine up here. Now, remember, we're going to flaps. 15. So what we're going to do, and in X-Plane this works really good, you just move it down. And then the needle will be moving. Okay, it's in transit right now. Alright, so flaps are at takeoff. No, they're, where are they at? Oh, yeah, they are at 15, and they are green. Okay. Uh, again, we don't blank the lower one. Whoops. And next up is the takeoff checklist. All right, folks, so we're ready to get taxiing. It's a little bit of a taxi, so if you want to take us about a minute or minute and a half break... Now would be a time. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to edit this. That's why I kind of give you that little heads up. And we are going to move on to the uh, end of the runway here. Runway lights or runway turnoffs on. Taxi light on and off so they know that we want to get moving. And RTO on the brakes. And I said I did want to check these out here okay config check green light on the flaps state trim that's what we forgot to set 375 so we'll put it right about there uh, cabin secure MCP set transponders at TRA and landing lights are set appropriately All right, we're ready to start moving. We'll turn traffic on. And one last thing up top. Turn that y'all damper on, and I am going to hit the brakes here real quick. I forgot to do one thing. OK. 
Okay, bear with me a second here, folks. Going to take a few more seconds here. Okay, just involved setting the parking brake again. Okay, let me get that ACARS program running. Okay. Okay, folks, we're just about there. All right, so we got that going. All right, so I do apologize for that. We're going to hopefully make up for it with a phenomenal flight. That's my hope here. At the end of the runway, we'll do our departure brief. Okay, we are now taxiing out. And what I'm going to do All right, so I've got Sim Toolkit up here while we're taxiing. Uh, for the departure brief, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're going to be doing a couple of, uh, we'll be doing departure, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, KADN 2Q. Now the, uh, the departure here, um, Pull that up. Oh, that's the Davy. Sorry. All right. So we're going to come off uh, the runway here and do a pretty quick turn, loop back around and head out. Now let's do the actual brief here. Um, as we're getting a little crooked. Hang on. Let me straighten that out. All right. <clears throat> okay. So 122.3 is the approach here. We don't have controllers. I've looked. Um, Airport elevation is 41 feet, and uh, transition level 13,000. And we're going to hold here. This is getting hard to steer and talk and do all of that. So we're getting also to the end of the runway, so we'll just kind of... But from the reason we're in Wellington here, they said this is a challenging approach. And as you can look out there, it is kind of challenging with all these hills around. And when they get their 60 knot winds, I could see where this gets to be a pretty tricky approach. But we're in a departure going straight out to sea, so it shouldn't be as bad. Now, the aircraft traffic you see on here is not on POSCON. Well, let me double check. Yeah, it is not on POSCON. 
that is live ATC. And when you saw me open up the plugins that are live traffic, basically what that pulls from is all the, the right now real world data. In this case at Wellington, that aircraft is right where it is there in the real world. Now, the depiction of it when it gets on the ground, that can get kind of funny. Now, usually shows the right type of aircraft, but 9 out of 10 times, probably the wrong airline. That part I don't understand. All right, so we're coming up to A1. And I know you can't see that plane right now, so hang on. We're going to bring it to a stop right here. All right, so let me get in here. First thing I want to do, that way you can see out. There's that aircraft on final. Okay, let's get into the departure brief. All right, let's get this out of the way. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here, folks, uh, from Wellington, it's 122.3 for the approach. Uh, departure frequency, 41 is the elevation, 13,000 transition. We've been over that already. We're doing the KDNU 2K to Quebec departure, runway 16. And we're going to initially maintain runway heading to 1,200 feet, turn left, direct Revna. And they've got the chart right here, so you can see we're going to go to Revna. Now, uh, from Revna, track 105 to 5,000 feet. Then turn left, direct Adlik. So we're going to come around and come back into Adlik. And then this whole thing, maximum 180 degrees, or 180 degrees. How about 180 knots um, until turns complete, then 340 to KDNU. So basically from takeoff all the way around, we're at 180 knots. So basically to keep the turn tight. Now we're heading to Russell. So from Cad Cadnu, which is right here, uh, track uh, turn left, uh, 324, direct Russell. So pretty simple stuff, and our trends is right there. All right. Um, Let's go ahead and get into the arrival brief. Like I said, things do get going quickly. Uh, we may or may not get a chance in flight to do it. So, Davey, uh, what we're going to do, uh, 127.0 or 127.8 are our ATISs. Airport elevation, 23 feet. Uh, transition level coming down is 15,000. Um and we're on the Davy 7 Charlie. That's going to take us, we got to be over 8 Davy at 280 knots or slower, above 8,000 feet. And then we track in uh, heading 353 to Osaku to answer, cross Osaku at or above 5,000. Then uh, answer is also at above 5,000. From answer track 329 to Elop, track 353 to Eastnax, cross Eastnax at or above 3,000. And maximum of 210 knots. Okay. And then we'll expect vectors to our approach, which in this case will go to the ILS. Uh, will take us to the... Uh, Delta 165 Mike, we'll do the arc, come in. All right, so across the top is all our frequencies. What we're going to be plugging in is 1099. That's our localizer for India Mike Golf. That's how it's identified. The approach course is 231. Now, at DM at distance 5 from India Mike Golf, we need to be at 1600. 30 feet or on glide slope. And I say that for a reason. And then these are our minimums. Shows our airport elevation again of 23 feet. If we go missed, we're going to go runway heading to Lingu. 
going to be over Lingu at 3,000 feet, and we'll plan to high uh, to uh, hold. And the maximum speed they're telling us is 185 knots on the miss. Again, telling us the 15,000 transition level. And here is the actual charting. You can see we're going to track the arc here to MRAG and then come down the approach to land. Uh, MRAG at or above, at or 3,000. And here's why I say the way I said it. They stair step this, and I don't get this. This probably may be for planes now using glide slope. I don't know. But right here, we should be on glide slope somewhere in here. But that's usually the mark for the glide slope. The other thing I don't like about these uh, airports here in New Zealand, they show we have pappies, but they don't tell us what side. We have hiles for the arrival, runway in, uh, edge indicating lights, and uh, so I, it, it'd be nice to know what side to expect. I'm always expecting pilot, captain side. You never know, though. Um, and then finally, this is the missed approach here again. Alrighty, folks, so that is going to wrap us up. Uh, then once we're on the airfield, we're going to be coming down uh, probably, I'm going to zoom in here. We're going to try for A6 or A8. Of course, we'll go where we need to. We're parking in the domestic terminals. And for that, we're planned to go to gate 31. So B5 right into the gate. All right, folks, that ought to wrap us up here. Real quick look at our flight here. Again, there's our departure. Let's get the nav graph out of the way. And I want to show our route via the good friends at Sim Toolkit Live, the live map. You can kind of see what we're getting ready to deal with. They kind of, they don't show the departure fully properly. But anyway, there you go, folks. No rain at the moment. Windshield's clean. Let's get into the takeoff checklist. And... All right, so going down the checklist, we see before entering the runway, verify you're on the right one. Big step here, folks. Always make sure you're on the right runway. Entering the runway, we'll turn the strobes on and the other lights as needed. We are on the TARA setting, and then we'll turn our fixed settings and throttle up. All right. So let's, without further ado, get moving to the runway. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and kick us up to strobe. Okay. Mac Air 572, Wellington traffic. Uh, be advised we're departing runway 16. Okay, got our clearance for takeoff. Okay. Here we go, folks. We're lining up. And be right back with you. Okay. 
sorry for that, folks. Had a question uh, by the by the boss of uh, Mac 572, my wife. Uh, when when did I want to eat? So so what we're gonna do? Let's go ahead set up our nav, L nav, V nav, R take off. Do a quick run of the checklist here. Where are you hiding? There you are. All right, so engine start switches are continuous, brakes are RTO, runway turnoff lights are on, strobes are on, landing lights are about to be turned on, heading bug set for runway heading, and LNAV, VNAV on, and we're ready to go, folks. We'll get the timers going here. There's mine. Landing lights on. We're cleared for takeoff. Sit back, relax, enjoy the flight. Welcome aboard. Flying with Mike. Okay, now what I'll do is throttle up to 60%. I know many of the checklists say to 40. Just a real easy eye catcher for me there. Once we're there, Release the brakes. Whoops. And we're going to go toga. Eighty knots. Okay. V1. V1. Rotate. Rotate. V2. 10. Positive rate. Okay, just kind of fly in the director now. 400. All right, gear up. It's in transit. One thousand. Gear up. Okay, gears up, and we're gonna move it to off. Houston, there it goes. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and turn on the autopilot. Okay, reject takeoff can be set, all right. All right, folks, we are airborne. Uh, we are through 2,000 feet. Autopilot is on. Flaps coming up. And again, remember, we can't go over 180, so we're going to keep uh, flaps 5. So we're going to go one more notch. Okay. And all right. So let's move to the after takeoff checklist. Uh, throttles, flaps, auto brakes, auto start switches will remain continuous to transition level. Uh, let's do a quick check on that. And here we go. 13,000. Good deal. Okay, so we're good to go there. And it says in here 5,000 or above. Oh, let me catch up a couple things. We're getting ready to make that turn direct. Oh. 
Okay, so flaps are coming up. We're right now held between flaps 5 and flaps 1 because of airspeed. Um, so we'll hold it there. Here we go, making the turn. Always check your uh, turn and bank, uh, how much it's going to turn you bank-wise. Either 30, you might get the bank angle alert, so I try to keep it one notch down. 747, obviously I keep it in auto. All right, folks, we're getting ready to make the turn here at... Okay, it's not very nice there. At Rivna. Okay, and now we're going to be going direct Adlik. I'm going to go ahead and open mine up here a little, and this one too. There we go. And for now, let's put the weather radar on that one, terrain radar on that one. And again, what's painting here is terrain. Sometimes the weather will paint here. At 10,000 feet, we are going to turn off the uh, lights. Seatbelt signs are set properly, and back down to two. And altimeters will get set to standard at 13,000. You'll know that happens. These will turn yellow with the word STD on them. Okay, so while we're doing this, let's go ahead and catch up. Okay, signs are off. Coming to transition and we'll do our altitude check. Okay, altimeter check. All right, so about 600 feet to the transition level. There it is. You'll see it's in yellow. All we do is click STD and it's set to go. All right, so we are on our way, folks. Uh, we thank you for flying with Mike. Hope this has uh, been a pretty good uh, broadcast for you. If you like it, please click subscribe. Love to see uh, viewers here. Um, It's been an interesting uh, six months here at learning this, but uh, we do thank uh, each and every one of you for following our Twitch feeds, as well as uh, starting to pick up new people on the YouTube side. Hopefully you all will find your way over to the Twitch side. So we're going to sit back, relax. We've got about an hour. This whole flight is uh, all parked in at, uh, hang on a second. I didn't show you that. I should have. About an hour and 20 minutes. So we're airborne. Hopefully we'll be there in about an hour. And uh, hope you all enjoy the flight. For now, while we head up to cruise, we'll play some music in the background to hopefully uh, uh, make things uh, a little easier.
18,000 feet. All right, well, let's uh, see where we're at here. We've uh, hopefully begun our acceleration. Okay, so let's look down here at our after takeoff. Air conditioning and pressures are set. Engines, landing gear, auto throttles off. Flaps are up and we're set, ready to go to descent. And for those wondering, yes, there was a log pause in between songs there. Sometimes on this program, uh, um, pretzel rocks, they come pretty quick. And sometimes they're 30 to 40 seconds apart. So, uh, well, right now we're accelerating up to cruise speed. Flaps are up and... Uh, see uh, what we're looking for on an arrival okay according to the a cars program we are definitely not three hours out that's a no wait that's wrong one that's why 33 minutes out oh my goodness <laughs> I'm sitting there going, there is no way we're three hours out of Auckland. Okay, so. This is one of the bugs with Zebo that PMDG seems to work through pretty good. She'll start climbing at 9,000 feet a minute. Walk away, come back, she crashed. So, I kind of keep an eye on it. And this is what I wanted to do. Hang on a second. Let me come down to here and go to index, perf, and one. Okay, we're in climb. All right, I just wanted to make sure. Because sometimes I find it when it goes, uh, doesn't come out of climb two or climb one, it starts this violent porpoising. Let's take a look outside again. That's a really nice livery on here. Okay, I'm just watching the climb rate here, making sure it doesn't get too excessive. Again, the goal, 29,000. Verify that. 29. 29. Okay, so let's see how things work out. Okay, 4,000 to go. And I can see where part of the problem comes in. 
the airspeed management seems to be way off with this. Because right now it should be coming down. So that way it gives it and then hold when it's able to start building speed. Like right around a thousand feet a minute. sticks here. Just uh, since this is just going to you folks at YouTube, the kind of flying we do at Flying Mike at with uh, Mike like, um, is basically Zebo flights. We've got a series of flights we've been kind of working between. Um, we were flying the Caravan and uh, King Air for X plane up in Alaska. That's on a break right now because right now the weather up there and the level of uh, light from the sun is pretty minimal so we'll pick that up here shortly um, but overall um, we also fly with uh, the spark 747 400 here in uh, X plane and that is a phenomenal plane much will be much to the level of PMDG Right now, it's a two-year project that's really gotten to a great par uh, point. They've uh, taken the default 747, just like Zebo took the 737-800 default, modified it into these really good platforms to fly. That's and that's what's coming with the uh, 747. And see, this is where I am not a big fan of this plane. Bear with me here as I get the uh, aircraft back down to the right altitude. And of course using trim. And to me that's the worst thing in the world to use. Thousand to go. like we might settle down. Okay. I think she's firmed up finally. We'll keep an eyeball on that. Like I said, this aircraft has some quirks. Um, I'm trying to find the latest greatest, but I don't know if there is one. But anyway, um, but yeah, those are the aircraft we fly. Sorry for getting distracted there. Um, the 747-400, the 737 here in Zebo right now. There are some times I do fly the MD-80. And uh, um, also the Caravan and King Air. Uh, primarily we do that up in Alaska, just flying into some really 
as you would expect in Alaska, out of the way airports. <clears throat> some of the tr some of them are truly one way in, one way out. Um, some are not. So, but they're fun to fly in. Believe it or not, they are fun. So, but anyway, the Zebo flight for today is Wellington, New Zealand to Auckland. 300 mile flight, uh, about another hour. Oh, I'm thinking about 45 minutes at the most. And uh, so let's get outside, let you take a look at this beautiful paint scheme they've got for this. Um, I'm not even sure they have 737 800s, but I'm glad someone took the time to do this. Because um, I think they're more of an Airbus company. And yes, I am one of those crazy people that would love to live in New Zealand or Australia. Um, just looks neat. I I just um, I saw a lot of a uh, lot of articles on Christchurch um, with the uh, especially with the Antarctica program. I love flying to C-130. By the way, down to Antarctica. Haven't done it in a couple of years. A lot of. Uh, virtual airline politics that I don't agree with were giving me troubles so uh, I have stayed away from there let them do whatever the heck they want to try and do and uh, I'll get down there again so plus right now X-Plane doesn't have a good C-130 and if I did know how to make one we'd get one up there for them. but anyway folks uh, checking back in Nice and beautiful textures. All right, we're flying Zulu, Kilo, Oscar, Juliet, Charlie today. So what I might do for the next flight with uh, this series with the 737, might see where this aircraft, if it exists, what it is and where its next flight is. So folks, relax. We should be coming up on top of climb here soon. That's what I'm getting in here to check top of climb 85 miles out what I'm going to do is quickly go over the brief with y'all I'm not going to put it up on the screen in fear of forgetting it um, well yeah I will uh, hang on let me uh, work some magic here This way, in case my magic forgets, you'll still be able to see outside the plane. All right, so um, let's pull this up to this angle, pull this into the view. All right, so we got Sim Toolkit pulled up. We're going to do it real quick. We only got about 20 miles to go, but for the arrival itself, uh, again, 15,000 for the transition. We're coming in on Davy. From Davy, we go to, we have to be at or above 8,000, slow to 280. We'll track 353 to Osaku to Ansor. Both of those, we have to be at or above 5,000. Then track 329 to Elop, track 353 to Insac, cross Esnax at or above 3,000. More importantly, speed can't be uh, should be under 210. From there, we'll expect clearance or vectors to our approach. Our approach today is into Auckland. Uh, it's effective 25 December 2020. Page 11.2. You see our frequencies across the top. Now we're going to go ahead and set 109.9 in our uh, computer. Uh, aircraft and we're gonna do that down here hopefully you see that if not I'll bring it up for you to see it 1099 okay 
All right, so we got them in both. We're gonna come up here, set, hang on, doing it the hard way, 231. Okay, so let me move Sim Toolkit out of the way because we're real close to top of descent. And that way you can see what we're doing here. So what we did, went down here. Now this is a new gauge to me. I don't see this very often in the 7.3s. I just dialed in 109 decimal 9, then moved it up to active. Same thing over here. We'll come up here, make sure we're set. far okay we're also going to set our V speeds and we're going to go V30 145 so we'll plan 160 for the arrival plug that in and we can check that real quick it'll show up right over here at the progress page 55 miles out Okay, so back up top here, and we'll continue that for just a moment. Okay, Sim Toolkit's back up for you. Um, we're going to be vectoring over to Delta 165 Mike. We'll take the 13 mile arc for AA which is this VOR right in here, 13 miles around, intercept into the, uh, at Emmerich, and track in on the ILS. Uh, real quick, 3,000 feet. We gotta be at 1,500 feet or on glide slope at this point at distance five. And then we'll see Pappy's Hiles and Reels. Well, it's daylight, so we won't see the approach lighting system but we should see the pappies. All right, folks, that wraps it up. And again, once we're on the ground, we're gonna shoot for A6. I doubt I'll get lucky enough for A4, but we'll shoot for A6, A8 at the furthest, or nine. So for hope, oh, oh, I'd be shocked if I could get A4. All right, and finally, we're parking here, gate 31 right off of B5 into it. Okay, and just a second for the live map to reload. Here's where we are. We're right over where they're saying TOD is. 40 miles. We'll give it just about 20 more miles and then we'll set up with the descent. We'll be doing an auto break all right so let's go ahead and start the descent checklist as I said we kept the, the passenger signs off we're gonna keep them off to transition level and at 15,000 we're gonna turn those on one thing I do want to show you guys because there's a lot of you out there that always have trouble figuring out in these Boeing jets where do I put the transition level coming in if it works on your FMC, go to your descent page. <clears throat> From there, click forecast. Right here's your transition level. Can't speak for the 787, don't have it, don't know anything about that bird. Execute makes that now our transition level coming in. Um, go back to here, 32 miles out. So about 20-ish miles, we'll click in. Shot, oh, there it is, TOTD is on the nav display right here. And we'll see if we'll get lucky and the music will time with the, s probably not. But what we'll do from the uh, top of descent down, we'll, uh, simply uh, go with the music in very low mode <laughs> and there you go the coast of New Zealand North Island 
<clears throat> remember, there's two islands here. The north, where Auckland, the capital, and Wellington is. Christchurch and Queensland are on the South Island. If you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you'll know. If you don't know, uh, it was filmed in New Zealand in the fjords down in the South Island. So uh, just something that I learned along the way. All right, so let's see here. We're about 20 miles out. May get lucky. Oh, and I didn't turn the condition landing or engine levers to can auto. That's fine. We'll get those a little later on. Because we're going to have to put them back on here. Okay, so decent procedure. Decent, uh, let's see here. Okay, we've got all that set up. Okay, we are close enough now that I'm going to go ahead and set our first altitude to 8,000. We can't, descend, can't be below that, so that's why I set that first. And yeah, I know. Didn't get to it quick enough. Okay, and... If you press descent, you'll see descend now, execute, and we're going to start descending. And it says we're on reserve fuel. Hopefully, actually, no, we're not. Hang on a second. What is going on? Uh, 7.9. Oh, yeah, we are. I set it to 8. Okay. Well, we're fine. That just means I better make this first uh, landing count. <clears throat> All right, so we're starting our descent. Engine lever or start switches are in continuous. Fasten seat belts. We'll do it 15,000 feet. So that'll give the uh, flight attendants plenty of time to finish up what they're doing. Um, what we can do at the moment here, just to have a little fun. Oh, where is it? Now, you probably can't hear the captain telling them that. It's, for some reason, pretty low for you all. I think I know why. Um, but if I was to turn that up, the uh, interior noise of this aircraft would be overpowering. So, uh, just letting people know we're starting down. So, to make their way to their seats. And here we go. Again, Davy at or above 8,000. Okay, we got our brakes set at 3. MCP set at 8,000. And our, our V-REF set. All right, checklists. Okay, uh, radio barrow, we'll switch to the radio navigation. Nav radios are set, auto brakes as needed. And we'll go ahead and we'll set up there. There we go, folks.
here we come down now the problem here that I ran into um, coming up it doesn't descend quick enough why am I getting it again each eight cars program has its own quirks and the one for uh, Mac Air is just like it okay We're going to definitely be above 8,000. So I'm going to go ahead and set four, five. Actually, let's go for three. Adjust if we need it. Okay. Because we probably will. All right, folks, so any questions you might have, please put them in the comments. I do get the emails to let me know you've commented. Uh, would really let me know if, uh, one, I'm saying something wrong or doing something wrong, which <laughs> that would never happen with me in the flight sim. Yeah, right. <laughs> let me know, because I do try to fly these as realistically as I can. Um, and again, I use the word can. Some things are omitted from here. Um, but anyway, we're uh, through 20,000 or through 21,000. We are currently 72 miles. So it should be doable, but I like to get down to those numbers, um, preferably. We're still. We're not even going to make, that's why I, I did what I did. We're not going to make 5,000 by these two. All right, hang on a second. Something's not looking right. Oh, interesting. That's what I get for assuming with these charts. What's going to happen here is we're going to turn around to come back and catch that. Okay. Let's see what we can do here, because what I might do is go direct from answer to it. We'll see what altitude we get down to. Set my altitude again. Okay. 18,000 feet. Okay, we're not at transition yet. That's the North American standard one that's built into their A cars. A couple thousand more to go. Okay, we're 40 minutes into the actual flying time. Uh, this is, so let me get that. That's why I like to look. All right, let's get Sim Toolkit out of here. There we go. Let me make sure. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is zoom it in. We're going to answer now. We're still 10,000 feet above. Actually, we're already beginning our turn, so I'm going to go ahead, move. Make us go direct. 
All right, there's transition, standard, actually incorrect. One zero two zero. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to take over. We're going to go into a quick hold. We've got to get down. And now we're starting to speed up too much. So what I'm going to do is bring us about 350 would be 170. Actually, we'll just go like this. All right, so we are over. <clears throat> We're just doing a quick get ourselves down to like 5,000, and then we can descend on that. We got to be at 210 as well here, folks. Okay, so the speed brakes can come off. And I am going to help it down. All right. 10,000 feet. So let's hit the speed brakes again. And set for 210. At about 8,000, I'm going to go ahead and swing us around. And let's get these lights on. Okay. Right there's eight thousand. Okay, so what I've done basically, because of what it was going to make us do to get back to this fix, I went direct. We were way high, so I turned us in a modified hold to get us down to the correct flight level. And all right, so D one six five M. Okay, so it's not going to let us. That's fine.
And of course there goes our speeds. Thousand to go. Thousand to go. Twenty five hundred. Let's try this again. And what we're going to do is we're going to... A lot was going on there, I know, folks. Um, so what we're going to do is be flying to here... Actually, we're going to kind of try our best. What are we on here? Oh, we don't even have any VORs pulling up. That's nice. <clears throat> okay, no biggie. We're going to do our best to kind of fly this 13-mile arc. Okay, we're level at 3,000. Heading select. Speed slowing to 210, which is just above first notch of flaps. I'm pretty sure we're inside 13 miles, so we're going to go ahead. set up here we're vectoring ourselves basically okay one check here we are the only plane in the area 1020 for the alti uh, altimeters yep okay so here we come folks um, down. I'm going to try and do a makeshift arc here. All right, so this has been the last uh, few minutes have been kind of fun. Uh, always are sometimes when you fly with Mike, so just make sure your seatbelts are on and your tray tables are up. You never know what's going to come on next. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and close those speed brakes. Give you all a little look of the bird here. All right, let's zoom in. All right, how are we doing here? Twenty-five hundred. Getting into a little bit of terrain out here. Okay, just making sure. I 
actually. Okay. Alright, so we're getting close to where I'm going to go ahead and make my next turn to 030. Twenty-five hundred. Now, once I turn back towards the airfield, right now we're uh, 16 miles from the localizer. Because um, I'm going to basically... Well, we'll do our best here. That's all we can do. But what I'm thinking about doing it is about here... Once we get to this point here, make the turn, and then head for the intercept point. And let me just see Ambridge. Here we go. And as we come around, these should come alive here. We'll see. If not, we'll be shooting the approach. What I like to do is get on the ILS, get on the glide slope. Until I can visually see my runway and then determine if I want to take over. Inbound uh, on the last flight we did, that was uh, incredible. The uh, um, it was just incredible. The uh, visibility was as it was saying. Let's turn you down one more notch. Twenty five hundred. Okay. little nervous. I haven't seen the localizer come up yet. Don't expect the glide slope yet to show. The reason being we're not aimed at it yet. There's the localizer. All right. Go a little further here. Okay, and now what we'll do, make that turn. We'll start tracking towards where we're supposed to go. We're also going to go into VOR lock. The glide slope may finally show up on the dial here. May take us turning a little bit further in. Okay. And there's the glide slope. You can see it there. Localizer there. And I am going to begin to set up an intercept here in a moment. Let's go ahead and set that up. Go ahead and go into approach. And what I'm going to do now is slow us down to 190. Set in five degrees of flaps. Arm up the speed brake and do the checklist here real quick. Speed brakes armed. VORs captured. All right, so approach checklist. 
uh, altimeters are set, altitude set, ILS course set, V card, V speed set, minimum set. Um, flaps set to five. We're going to go ahead and see where we at. Twelve. Twenty. Five hundred. Slow to one eighty. Okay. And uh, ring flaps to ten. There we go. Um, landing gear will go down at between eight and five. And lights are on let's make sure yep all right so better view from this side okay we're just 2500 here comes the glide slope down and missed approach altitude and heading set okay and we'll do a real quick one over here finish this up they're set landing lights are on passenger signs are on altimeters updated RNIP uh, we everything's arm verified down three green 15 cont everything's there good 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 okay all right four we are on glide slope folks Airport in sight, and I got the Vassie. So we'll let her travel in a little bit here. 2500. We are now distance 8. What I'm going to do. Go to flaps uh, 20 or 25. Gear down. Going to slow to 160. Okay. Flaps 30. Okay, 30 and 30 showing. There they are. Speed brakes armed. You can see that right here. Auto brakes at 3. Missed approach information set. We are cleared to land. Auckland traffic, Mac Air 572, five mile final, gear down, runway 23 left. All right. Now, to do an auto land, if the visibility was as crappy as it was before, we came in here last uh, week or, or earlier this week. Um, you have to set this command on too. So both of these have to be on. However, in our case, let's bring the wheel up. Okay, and I'm gonna take the plane. Winds are 1,000. Ooh, they probably could have taken a five landing here. Wow. Like I said, we're going to try and come in at... Blinky lights go away. Okay, we're way high, so hang on. Use a little bit of the elevator and the power to get back in track here. And we're almost there. Okay, 160. 500. 400. 300. 200. 100. 50. 40. 30. 20, 10. Reverse. Bring them up to about 40. I 
Auto brakes are on as well. Easy, girl. 80 knots. Definitely didn't make my turnoffs like I wanted with that land, land long that I did. All right, so we got a little bit of a taxi. Oh, we're going all the way up here to A9, I think. Let's find out what we're coming off on. All right, folks, wheels are on the ground. As soon as we come off here at our taxi and do our after landing, I'll get our numbers. But I've already done two checklist items. Yeah, we're coming off at A9. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to clear the hold line. Oop. And he says clear the hold line, not stop on it. All right, folks, we have cleared. We're going to get on uh, the taxiway here leading to domestic. Again, Bravo 5 is where we're going to turn off into gate 33, I believe it is, or 32. I'll look at the remarks from the company. And I can see where some of the airlines get painted wrong and how. I have no idea who WPR2 is. Oh, something tells me I'm on a, not on the taxiway. Yeah, I'm on the old runway. Oh, this is taxiway A. Okay. And we're going to 31. Okay. Had it wrong in all aspects. Okay, so for after takeoff or after landing checklist, where are you? There we go. Now we're getting a line. Okay, let me just make sure our speed is good. There we go. Landing lights off. Strobes to steady. What I want to do is get off Alpha here and get up on the other one. Okay, we're coming off Alpha, heading up to Bravo. Turn off this terrain radar, weather radar, TCAS. Okay, so when we get clear the uh, hold line up here that you see right ahead of us we're gonna do our after landing checks because I know I'm missing some stuff okay auto brakes off speed lever down probe heat off exterior lights engine start switch to auto other flaps and that okay so up here we need to turn the probe heats off the anti-ice off lights off put these guys to auto uh, okay and 
Weather radar off, flap lever up. I know that hasn't been done yet. Okay, it is going up. Okay, so we're done with the checklist. It's about to go green right now. Let me make sure page, no page two. All right. All right, so here we come up to the domestics, folks. While we're taxing, let's go ahead and kill the flight directors. And one thing we could do now, get that APU started. Okay, we're going to get to cheat. Turn those taxi lights off. Here we go. All right, folks, we are in the blocks here. They've got them numbered a little differently than my chart. Go figure. All right, so we're in the blocks. Let's run the after uh, shutdown checklist. Parking brake uh, set. Let's double check. Okay. Uh, electrical power set. Start levers to cut off by electrical power. We have our APU. Okay. And APU bleed is on. And. Okay. Let me just make sure here. Next up, start levers to cut off, fasten seatbelts, any collision lights, fuel pumps, cabin. Okay. All right. So, off. And they're rolling back. Okay. Uh. APU gens, fasten seatbelts, um, start levers to cut off. Transponder to standby. Exterior lights off. 
and fuel pumps off. So we'll be working up here. All right, any collision off, we'll turn these three off. We'll get the hydraulic pumps next. Uh, engine pumps, oh, all off. And the APU is running, auto brake is off. Folks, we are in the gate, shut down. We thank you for flying with Mike. Last checks over here, cabin and ice, wing ice, good. Engine, panel, going just through them real quick. All right, folks, that wraps up the show. We thank you for flying with Mike. We hope you've had an enjoyable flight. Um, this is the first time I've actually done it just for YouTube, and I won't be able to um, um, edit anything on this, so I'm kind of bummed on that, but let's do it from this angle. But there's the uh, chariot that brought us into New Zealand today. I do have one stupid thing I forgot to do. Got to open the doors. <clears throat> and go up here. Okay, and turn the APU off. That means all the fuel pumps can go off. All right, folks, now everything's turned off. People are getting off the plane. Mac Air has us set for a landing rate of 335 feet per minute. I'm not going to argue. No need to. They wouldn't listen to me. File the pirate. It is, it is filed. Do a quick check here. Excuse me. There it is. Okay, and Poscon, we're still good there. All right, folks, that'll wrap it up. Have a great rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for flying with Mike.